Stag Junior Batch 12 versus Elijah Craig Barrel Proof C919. My top two favorite Barrel Proof bourbons from last year head to head. New double bass starting right now. <laughs> Welcome to the 10th episode in a special series called Double Bass, where you, the viewers, get to pick two great whiskeys to put head-to-head -to, -head to see which one comes out on top. No two bourbons in the last month were asked to be put head-to-head -head by viewers more than these two, Stag Junior Batch 12 and Elijah Craig Barrel Proof C919. Both are really amazingly delicious, but everyone asked me if they could only buy one, what would it be and why? So today I'm going to put them head-to-head -head and try to break down the subtle differences that I pick up, so let's meet the two powerhouses. Since its release in fall 2013, there have been 13 batches of Stag Junior released to date, and its age is believed to hover between 7 to 9 years old. Batch 12 is the summer 2019 release, coming in at 132.2 proof, using Buffalo Trace's Low Rye Mashable 1, and retailing for about 60 to 80 bucks. Batch 12 has been universally loved by bloggers, whiskey tubers, and podcasts for the way it packs a ton of flavor without being so harsh on the palate like early batches of Stag Junior. Heaven Hill always has some great barrel proof offerings and that could truly be said about the last batch of Elijah Craig barrel proof for 2019. Coming off the heels of batch B519 which was the brand's lowest proof release at only 122.2, 2019's final batch of 2019 came in at a whopping 136.8. Now these are 12 years old, released three times a year with a mash bill of 75% corn, 13% rye, 12% malted barley, and a retail price of about 60 bucks. This also happens to be one of my top favorite bourbons last year. Now before we get started, here is how I will score it. I will give a score between one to five, one being the lowest and five being the highest in four different categories. Nose, palate, finish, and consistency. Let's see which one of these beasts come out on top. First, let's mix them up. Okay, so I'll be doing these blind like I normally do and seeing how after some more air time in the bottle, how these have maybe changed. Keep an eye on the scoreboard to follow along and let's start with the glass A right here which was on your left and my right. So here we go on the nose. So this is heavy vanilla, heavy brown sugar, heavy caramels. Getting a good amount of oak here. There's a ton of oak coming through, some nice charred oak. Very, very strong too on the, on the, uh, on the nose here. Getting a lot of alcohol. It's, it's sweet, yet you could feel, you could really feel the strength on the nose here on this one. Hint of a cherry there. Definitely some honey roasted peanut. Cinnamon. But really, this one is just rich caramels, like burnt brown sugars, a lot of oak, slight fruit flavor, a little bit of nuttiness. Amazing nose on that one. Let's go to Glass B and see what we get here. So Glass B is definitely sweeter. This one has way more cherry coming through on the nose. Good amount of honey. Beautiful molasses type flavor here. Just super sweet. A lot of brown sugars here as well. Definitely more of a sweeter oak profile in here. This glass, glass A, is definitely more, uh, more of kind of a rickhouse type smell to it. A little bit, it just smells a little bit older, a little bit more oak forward. Whereas this one, you're getting, you're getting oak in there, but it's very sweet. Man, and the cherry and the molasses in there, this is real, very, very candy. A little maybe some, some rich kind of like cherry syrup in there too. A lot of vanilla molasses though. Both of them, awesome noses. All right, let's grade them. So scoring these, I gave each of these a 4.8. And the reason why I did a 4.8 for both is they're both amazingly delicious noses, but in different ways. Glass A is, it just seems darker and richer. There's definitely more of an oak profile to it. There's that nuttiness, there's that Rick House smell, which I love to smell in a bourbon. If you ever walked into a Rick House, you just get all that, that rich, that deep aging, that wood characteristic and all the sweetness that's kind of in the air, almost like angel share coming out of the glass. It's not overly complex, this glass in glass A, but what you're getting is you're getting a ton of caramels, deep rich vanillas, brown sugars, a little bit of a nuttiness there. This one I gave a 4.82, but for a little bit of a different reason. This one you're getting oak, but it's definitely sweeter. This one is more cherry, more molasses as it's kind of jumping out of the glass it's more vanilla and but that cherry note the way it comes out and the the oak profile you get it's just a little bit on the sweeter side so 
They're both 4.8s for different reasons, but both are stellar noses. All right, let's go to the palette. Start with letter A. Here we go. Wow, this is, this one's a powerhouse. This one just came in, completely lit up the palette. This is a good translation from the nose to the, to the palate. You're getting more of those brown sugars, the caramels. It's very strong. The viscosity of this, of this particular glass is just, it's so good. The viscosity that I'm getting, the incredible mouthfeel I'm getting on, you know, from glass A here is really, really good. It is just painting the sides of my palate. Let's go for another sip. All right, so second sip. I think my palate got a little bit used to it. More burnt caramels, more brown sugars. A lot of vanilla extract on the back end here. But I'm also getting a lot of oak. There is a good amount of oak characteristic, especially on the back end there. A little butterscotch note that's, that's popping through too. Man, that is super rich, super dark. Oh, just so, so good. All right, let's go for another sip. All right, third sip, it's getting a tad more oaky now. Getting more oak coming through. The sweet flavors are still there. Now more oak is making itself present. More of that barrel char. More of that angel share. But you're still left, left with some really great oak flavors. Really great, almost a leathery aspect to it as well. I think, if I had to guess, I would probably say that was the, the Elijah Craig. Just based on the leather notes that I'm getting with that 12-year-age with that statement on it. Oh, it's just so good. All right, let's get some water. All right, let's go to this glass. Here we go, letter B. Just a completely different experience. It's amazing when you put these two head to head, the differences you start picking up. Mm. This has so much flavor to it. Again, vanilla, caramels. This one has a little bit more of a chocolate cherry thing going on. Mm. Brown sugar. You're definitely getting that molasses, almost like a root beer float type thing going on on the palate as well. Let's go for another sip. Wow. That second sip was even better. So much flavor. The notes of vanilla, caramel, the brown sugar you're getting, the vanilla extract, the cherry, the hint of chocolate. I would say out of the two, this one doesn't drink like it's proof. You know, so one of them is 132, the other one's 136. So they're both very high proof, but this one doesn't drink like it's that high. It drinks a lot easier. It's just so sweet and so delicious, man. All right, I think I'm ready, let's score them. All right, so for letter A, I'm gonna give this one a 4.6. I think the palette on this is just unbelievable. It paints the palette, it really coats it well. It's, this is definitely some butterscotch. You got some vanillas, the caramels, deep dark brown sugars, the honey roasted peanut characteristic. It coats the palate so well. Just really good. Not super complex, but what you're getting is just delicious. And you're getting a good amount of oak profile there too. Uh, letter B, I'm gonna give this one a 4.8. Now the reason why I get this a 4.8 is because this one is just slightly easier to drink. When you actually taste this one, whatever the, this one is, that proof point that's in there, I'm gonna guess this is the stag because I already guessed that this was the Elijah Craig, but just the sweetness of this one is just so intense. And I could appreciate a bourbon that is that high in proof and doesn't drink like it. So for me, that's why this one got a little bit higher of a score. All right, let's go into the finish. Here we go, cheers. Mm. The finish on here is just getting more and more butterscotchy on glass A. Man, that's good. Such a beautiful finish on it. It's leathery, it's cinnamony, it's a lot of vanilla extract. It's mm, sweet oak, but it's a little bit darker than oak. So I could see if someone doesn't like, maybe uh, it, it's almost gonna get to that bitterness, but then it just kind of stops and stops a little bit short of it. But man, the flavor on that finish, and it goes on and on and on and on. One more sip of that one. While this one's even getting a little bit easier to drink too as you go through it, man, so good. There is that leather aspect to it that I'm getting now, which I don't remember picking up on either of these two in the beginning. So maybe that's something that's changed a little bit over time. Mm. So good. All right, let's get some water here. All right, let's go to glass B. Here we go. Cheers. 
Oh my God, that one just tastes like cherry vanilla Coke <laughs> on the back end. There's some just dark, dark, dark sugars. Cherry, man. There's a nice spice aspect to this one too. I'm getting a lot of cinnamon. It's weird, it doesn't drink super hot on the front of the palate. You do feel it on the finish though. On the finish is where that pepper, that pepperiness, that cinnamon spice comes in. So glass B just to me is just a little bit sweeter than glass A. Glass A to me is very sweet, just in a different way. Glass B comes across more candy, while glass A you're getting more of a uh, like burnt brown sugars, you're getting, you're getting some more vanilla extract, but glass B just literally tastes like there's some sugar in it and sugar added, and obviously there isn't, but that's why I believe that that one is probably the stag. Just Buffalo Trace to me just has this signature type of sweet oak profile. Let's go for one last sip here. Man, that sip there. I'm getting more and more brown sugar and cinnamon on the back end of glass B. Definitely still that cherry still hanging out. It literally finishes like a cherry vanilla Coke if you ever had one. Just this effervescent pepperiness that kind of sticks around on the back of the, uh, the palate. And there's, there's not really a leather aspect to this. That's why, that's why I feel like it's, it's the younger of the two. But it just kind of, the sweetness of it is just really intense. So, all right, let's score them. All right, so for both of these, let's keep it simple. I'm giving these both a 4.8. And the reason why I'm giving them both a 4.8, because they both offer amazing finishes. Just again, they're just a little bit different. So when you break them down, glass A has a leather note. It's got a little bit more of um, that butterscotch note on the back end is so good. And it lasts and lasts and lasts. I would say that glass A, I think, lasts a little bit longer than uh, glass um, B when it comes to the finish. But it's so sweet, it's complex, it kind of lingers there for a long time. Love glass A. Glass bead is just different. It just has this effervescence to it and this sweetness that's just really intense. The brown sugars, the molasses, the cherry, the vanilla, they all play through to the finish. They linger, it goes on and on and on. I still probably would give length of finish uh, to glass A, but for glass B, I think you're getting more flavors on the finish. So in that way, they kind of evened out. All right, last category, consistency, here we go. So for glass A, this has remained consistent from sip to sip here. I would say the only change that I've gotten in glass A from sip to sip has been the, the strength of the oak note that I'm getting. I think as you keep sipping, the oak starts to become a little bit more, I think a little bit stronger as you keep sipping on it. That, that older char that, that kind of comes through. You're still getting all the brown sugars, you're still getting all the vanillas, but that little bit of an oak char, I think, starts to kind of work its way up to almost even out the, the sweetness, which gives it a really nice balance. But I feel like your first couple sips are just really sweet, they're very candy, and then all of a sudden that oak starts catching up. So let's go to glass B and see what we get here. So for glass B, it's been amazingly consistent. Every time you take a sip, those sweet flavors are still there. The consistency, the finish, the palate, all those flavors, the cherry, the chocolate, mm, that, uh, that cherry vanilla Coke type aspect to it on the finish. It's, it's just a, a great glass, so. Um, all right, let's score them. All right, so for me, glass A almost got the highest score out of a five. I'm gonna give it a 4.9. And the only reason why it's getting a 4.9 is because I feel like when you sip on it, the oak profile comes a little bit ahead or evens up with the sweetness a little bit. It doesn't stay as sweet. You start getting some more oak profile. It provides a great balance, but you know, as far as consistency goes, I kind of have to rate it on if anything changes here. But glass B here, this one is getting a full five because this has stayed the same from the first sip to this, those last few sips I had. It is sweet, it has a great finish, it's mouth coating, it's complex, just delicious. All right, as you can see on the scoreboard, we probably had our closest matchup ever in a double base. I have to go back and watch. But coming in at 19.4 total score is letter B. Uh, just behind at 19.1 was letter A. Let's see which one the letter B was. I guess it was Stag, and it is. It is the Stag Junior, wow. Um, all right, so let's, uh, let's break these down real quick. So Stag Jr. was the one I chose out of this. Elijah Craig is over here. So 
if you're gonna if you're gonna ask me which one should I buy if I can only buy one, they're two completely different bourbons. When you have them side to side, it really just depends on your flavor profile you like. So if you're looking for something that's a little bit more balanced, a little bit more of that leather aspect, something a little richer, older, something that has some more oak profile to it, then definitely go with the Elijah Craig, that C919. It's just gonna bring that to the table. If you want something that's a little bit more candy sweet, molasses, cherry, uh, that signature Buffalo Trace oak profile, like I said, then go with the Stag Junior. All right, everyone, well, I hope you enjoyed this episode for Double Base, where we put Elijah Craig Barrel Proof C919 versus Stag Junior Batch 12. Awesome stuff. Glad you guys uh, voted on it. Glad I got to do it for you. If you haven't yet, hit the subscribe button below. Please hit that like button. If you haven't yet, find me on Instagram and find me on Twitter. Let me know down in the comments if you've done these head to head. What is your profile? Do you, would, do you lean towards Elijah Craig or do you lean towards Buffalo Trace? There's really no wrong answer. They're both amazing bourbons. Uh, leave me a comment down below of the next double base you want to see. And as I always say, it is not about the whiskey, it's the people you share it with. So cheers, and I'll see you next time on The Mash and Drum. Take care.